In this video, I'll be painting High Fleet Leviathan, so stay tuned to see how I get that chit in armour just right, as well as how you can get that flesh done fairly quickly. I'll demo everything on the brand new Parasite of Mortrex model. So to start with, we've built the model and we've primed it using Wraithbone Spray. The first thing we want to do is get that pinky colour in all the joints, and the colour we're going to use is Volupus Pink. We're going to mix this five parts contrast medium to one part Volupus Pink, and we're going to paint it all over all the bright exoskeleton, and make sure we get into all those recesses around the armour as well. Make sure that Volupus Pink is completely dry before we start the next step, and we're going to dry brush it using Wraithbone to get some of that bright colour back up. So this is a simple technique. I'm using one of the Army Painted Masters dry brush. It's kind of like a rounded dry brush. You can use a makeup brush or if you've got the Artist Opus ones. And essentially we're doing circular motions, catching all the raised areas, leaving that Volupus Pink in the recesses. Take your time with this. It's always easier to go back and do more if you need to. To brighten the skin and the exoskeleton even further, we're now going to do exactly the same thing using Pallid Witch Flesh. Now we are going to focus more to the raised areas and we are obviously going to take our time with this. The model can be quite brittle, the connection point is quite fragile as well, so do take your time and be careful with it. So just work your way around and get that nice bright colour, again leaving the pink in the recesses. We'll move on to the wing membranes next and we're going to base all of these using Cadian Flesh Tone. Now you're going to need two, maybe three coats of Cadian Flesh Tone to cover this properly. I find it's much easier to use it slightly thinner than normal because you can get it to run into the recesses and it really helps you sketch in around these areas and around the spines. Don't worry too much if you do make any mistakes because we can always fix it with Pallid Witch Flesh afterwards. And in this shot you can really see how that second and third layer of Cadian Flesh Tone really help give you a nice colour that really does reflect the box art nicely. To shade that Cadian Flesh Tone, the colour I'm going to use is Gulliman Flesh Contrast Paint. Now I'm going to use this neat from the pot, I'm going to put it on the palette and make sure I haven't got too much on my brush. And I'm essentially I'm going to drop it into those recesses and paint this around that exoskeleton, being careful not to spill it on there. Now you might notice as I'm doing this, I'm probably not being as careful as I should be. The more careful you are here, the less cleanup there is afterwards, which you'll see in the next shot. Going back to Cadian Flesh Tone, we're now going to patch up any areas that we've maybe put too much on, or overspilled, or that's looking a little bit too dark. As I said in the last shot, if you're tidy, it'll save you a lot of time here. I was a little bit messy rushing and I'm paying the price now because it's taking me a bit longer to do it. So just a bit of a tip there is to take your time and just be a lot more deliberate with how you place the shade. With the membrane now brought back up to a little bit of a brightness, we're going to highlight all of the raised areas such as the ridges and the folds using Kislev Flesh. Now I've made sure that this isn't too thin. I've left it fairly thick on the palette so that when I use my brush it covers and it's nice and bright. If you keep it too thin you can lose control of it and you may have to use more than one coat and I want to kind of get some speed back that I lost by making that mistake with all the heavy shading. With the wings now finished we're going to move on to the chitin armour and also all of the talons on the model. So we'll base them all together because we'll shade them at the same time. So starting with the talons we're going to use corn red and we're going to paint all of them. So make sure you do cover all aspects. There are some little bits coming out of elbows obviously at the top of the wings. If you're not sure check the box art. Check the 360 on the Games Workshop website as well to make sure you capture everything. And to base all the chitness armour, the colour we're going to use is Zarius Purple. This will give us a fairly bright purple result. If you want to go darker, then use something like Nagaroth Knight to base this. But I'm happy with the Zarius Purple. So just paint this all over that chitin, all over the hard plated armour. Take your time, especially when you come to the edges of parts of the model, so you don't spill over onto the white part. The next bit is nice and simple. We're going to shade all of the talons and all of the chitin using Null Oil. Now you can put a fairly thick coat of this on. Just take your time and make sure you don't spill it over any of the white or bright areas that you've already got. Let it dry, and if you need to put another coat on to make it darker, then feel free to do so. But it's always better to put a little bit on first, rather than go and flood the area to start with. We'll highlight all of the talons first, and the colour we're going to use for this is Evil Sun Scarlet. Now this red is much brighter, much more saturated than what we've got on the model at the moment, and that's great because it really helps simulate the sharpness of the talons without too much effort on our part. So in terms of how we apply it, just make sure you've got a little bit on your brush, a good tip, and because the talons are so sharp, they're modelled that way, you can drag the tip of the brush along the sharp edges, giving a really nice crisp highlight with that Evil Suns. 
To finish off the talons, we're going to use Troll Slayer Orange, which is a nice bright orange. Again, focusing on those sharp raised edges, make sure we've only got a little bit of paint on the brush and a good tip. In terms of where we're going to focus, it's just going to be the front or bottom 50% rather than the whole part of the talon like we did with the previous highlight. If you want to push these highlights a little bit further, you can perhaps add a spot highlight of Tau Light Ochre, but I'm not going to bother here because I'm quite happy with how it looks like this. We'll move on to the chitin highlights next as we've got the finish line in sight. So the colour we're going to use this is Gene Steeler Purple. And in terms of how we're going to apply this, it's going to be very similar to how we did the red on the talons. So make sure you've got a little bit on your brush and we're just going to first off aim for all the sharp edges around the plates, around that head cover as well. Make sure that you've got a decent amount on your brush, but not so much that makes it really, really difficult and you splodge paint everywhere. If you do, just go back over with some Zarius Purple. And to apply that chitin effect on the armor plates, all we're going to do is get a good point on our brush and we're going to stroke down from random line heights from the middle of the plate down to the bottom of the plate, but vary this so it gives you a little bit of a mishmash pattern as you can see on the video. We're going to do exactly the same using Slanesh Grey and this will be the final highlight on the armor. So again, use the tip of the brush to get a nice sharp edge. And again, when it comes to that chitin effect, we're going to paint inside the lines that we've already established using the Gene Stealer Purple. But we're not looking to go as high as the Gene Stealer Purple. So these lines will be more focused towards the bottom of the armor plates. Take your time working it all the way around the model. And once you've done that, you should have a really nice effect. The last thing I'm going to do with the model is I'm going to take some white scar and just use this to highlight the teeth to make sure they stand out a little bit from all of the other areas of the model. If you need to, take some pallid witch flesh and just go and correct any mistakes you may have made. I've made a few along the spines and I've made some spillages with the purple because I'm a bit clumsy. But otherwise, that's all we need to do. Let's have a look at the model on the turntable. So there we have it, this Parasite of Mortrex is done. You now know how to paint High Fleet Leviathan. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please, if you did, watch some of my other content. And if you really like what I do, check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.